Hello, my name is Christoph Finkensieb and I'm going to talk about how the structure of tonal music can be modeled at the node level. This research was conducted together with Martin Rohmeyer at École Polytechnique Fédérale de Lausanne. What do we mean by node level structure? Consider the following excerpt of music. When we hear such a piece of music, we don't perceive the notes in isolation. Instead, each note is related to its context. For example, this E is a passing note between F and D. Similarly, this B flat can be heard as a neighbor note of the two surrounding A's. Thus, each note has a function in its context. In addition, groups of notes can form larger latent entities, such as harmonies. None of these relations is explicitly represented in the music. It is up to the listener to infer them. So what is the context of a note? In some cases, a piece is strictly organized in voices or chords. Within a voice, the predecessors and successors of a note are known. Within a chord, it is known which notes are concurrent to a note. In general, however, tonal music is not strictly organized in chords or voices. Therefore, we do not know a priori which notes are considered adjacent and which notes or progressions are concurrent. We model this situation through a grammar-like generative process that produces every note in the piece together with explicit adjacency and concurrency relations. Adjacency is modeled through a graph structure. Notes that are considered adjacent are connected by a directed edge. New notes are inserted by replacing an edge with a note and adding new edges where appropriate. The new note can be a repetition, a neighbor or a passing note. Since passing notes can span larger intervals, they are marked by a special type of edge. Concurrency is handled by grouping notes into time slices. Connections between the notes are contained in the transitions between adjacent time slices. Thus, the piece consists of a sequence of time slices and transitions. New slices can be generated in two ways. The split operation inserts a new slice between two existing slices. The edges in the old transition can be used to generate new neighbors, repetitions or passing notes, which are put into the new slice. The spread operation turns a single time slice into two sequential slices. It takes the notes of the original slice, distributes them across the new slices, and can insert new repetition or passing edges. Let us look at how these operations can generate a simple cadential phrase. We start with the empty piece and insert two top-level notes C and E, that represent the tonic of the phrase in the third above. This tonic sonority is spread, to work as both a starting point and the goal of the phrase. At this point, we also decide to introduce a passing motion from E to C. The next step splits the transition from the first to the last slice and inserts a passing note D and a neighbor note B, creating something like a dominant sonority. In a final step, the transition from the first to the dominant slice is ornamented by introducing a suspension. The lower voice retains the C from the first slice, while the upper voice already moves on to the D from the second slice. The relations introduced by this model can be considered as structural primitives. They express the fundamental relations between nodes, as well as the function of each node in its context. More high-level concepts, such as the suspension pattern, are assembled out of these primitives. Latent entities, such as harmonies, appear at earlier stages of the generation process. For example, the three chords in this excerpt appear as slices in the beginning of the derivation. The subsequent derivation steps detail how the surface is derived from these three chords. In the paper, we provide more formal details of the model and describe a parsing algorithm for finding valid derivations of a piece. If you have questions or would like to see more examples, please visit us in the poster session.